pretend this background is like Christmassy because we're gonna be talking about some Christmas ideas. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. Hi, my name is Liz. Today we're gonna do something a little different. If you were around or have seen my video from last year, I did over 20 different Christmas gift ideas that were book-ish but not necessarily books specifically. But this year I, I feel like if you wanted some ideas, you can go check out that video. I'm not gonna repeat all those same ideas again this year. But I wanted to do, still do some sort of like gift idea video. So the way we're gonna do it today is I'm gonna be talking about five different genres of books and I'm gonna give you two different book ideas for those genres. So if you know a reader in your life who likes any of these things, then these would be really good gift ideas for them. I tried to pick some books that maybe aren't as well known. I'm trying to give some new ideas or maybe some books that just aren't super hyped up but should be. Hopefully you can find a good book for a book lover in your life. That is that. I don't know. I'll put a little picture on the screen of the cover of the book so that way that can help you in your search. I'm not gonna say all my ratings for all of them because honestly I don't remember all of my ratings for some of these books because I might have read them a while ago but I still remember them pretty well and they're still in my brain and that's how I can tell a book is a good book is if I still remember the book. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear someone mowing their yard. They decided to start mowing as soon as I started filming so Hopefully it sounds super annoying and loud, but if it is, I apologize. I'm also just like really getting in the Christmassy spirit. I really want to start decorating for Christmas. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and film this video to kind of get myself in that mindset of gift giving. Without further ado, let's get into the video. The first genre we're going to be talking about today is romance. <sighs> two romance books that I immediately thought of that I feel like not a ton of people talk about but they should they're not necessarily new but they're just books that I feel like no one ever raves about and they definitely should be hyped up more the first one being singles table by Sarah Desai I actually brought that one with me when I moved because I really really want to reread it at some point it is a part of a three interconnected standalones so this is a part of kind of a series but not really they're all standalones you can read them apart and it's not going to spoil anything for you I did end up reading all three but I kind of read them out of order. It didn't matter to me. It didn't bother me whatsoever. This book especially was my favorite out of the three. This book follows a free-spirited lawyer who it feels like she's kind of a matchmaker. She's gotten a lot of her friends coupled up and for herself she just went through a bad breakup so she's kind of taking a break from love but she really wants to help other people find the right one for them. When it's wedding season she ends up meeting this very challenging bachelor and decides to strike up a deal with him. She tells him that she will help him find his match by the end of wedding season if he introduces her to all of his celebrity clients. I really loved this book. I feel like from page one you see you get both their perspectives but from page one you can see the chemistry between these two and it was just so funny. It's definitely opposites attract. I really loved our main character. She like I said is very free spirited. She just was so joyful and funny and I loved their banter the entire book. I have other books by this author that I'm waiting to read and I cannot wait because the writing is just so easy easy to get through. And the second book I'm going to be talking about is Meet Me in the Margins by Melissa Ferguson. One thing I personally love in my books is when they are about fellow book lovers or if they're in the book field, like if they're a publisher or editor or writer. I love that in my books. And this one follows our main character who is an editor at this big publishing company. She is actually in the process of writing her very own romance manuscript. However, the CEO of her company hates romance and there's this big opportunity that comes up where her manuscript accidentally gets dropped at a meeting and the CEO reads it. She wants her to continue her manuscript and would love to eventually publish it for her. Our main character, she leaves her manuscript in this kind of hidden room at her work and what ends up happening is when she comes back to get it, she discovers that someone wrote some really critical constructive feedback in the margins of her manuscript. This leads to her kind of forming a pen pal relationship with this person. Slowly this pen pal relationship morphs into more. I really love this book. It was a very short and quick read and I think it's the perfect little standalone romance book for someone. Next we're going to be talking about mystery thrillers. The first mystery thriller we're going to talk about is Hidden Pictures by Jason Regulock. I read this a year and a half ago. When I picked this up I was pleasantly surprised with this book. I ended up really really enjoying it. I flew through it within 24 hours. Binge read it in a day and it was so incredibly good. I have noticed online I feel like more and more people are starting to recognize how good this book is, how good this author is. And 
and I've seen some more recognition of this book so I'm really excited for that and this author just came out with a new book I think it's titled the last one at the wedding but I wanted to talk about this one because this one what I thought was really really intriguing about it it actually spooked me in a lot of mystery thrillers I actually don't get very scared and this one actually made me scared to read it at night our story follows a young woman who is fresh out of rehab so she's having a really hard time finding a job anywhere she gets an interview with a family who wants a nanny for their young son thankfully this family they're willing to look past her rehab it's kind of like her dream come true in a job she gets a guest house to stay in and she is being paid very well and gets to hang out with this really cool little boy what's really interesting is this little boy loves to draw he's a little artist but what starts as these innocent little stick figures slowly morphs into to these very disturbing and realistic pictures. And what I really, really liked about this book is I'm a visual learner myself. The author actually has photos of the drawings that this little boy is doing. So throughout the story, you get to see the evolution of his drawings and you get to see what the main character is seeing, which I thought was really, really cool. It definitely added to that eerie kind of creepy vibe you're getting throughout the whole story. Next, we have The Last Word by Taylor Adams. Once again, I've talked about this book a lot, but I gave this book five stars. I binge read it during a plan ride and I loved every second of it. This story follows a young woman who decides to go on a solo trip with her dog and she's going out onto the, off the coast of Washington to house sit. While she's there all she has time for is reading so she's reading going through all these books and she ends up reading this book and leaving a really bad review online and the author ends up reaching out to her and asks her to take it down but she refuses. After she refuses to remove her review weird things start happening around the property and it leaves you and her wondering is this author stalking her it was just very fun it had a really good twist to it and i i just loved this book it was so fast paced takes place over the course of like two days the whole time it was just action packed i could not stop reading this book so highly highly recommend this one next we're going to talk about literary fiction i personally don't read a ton of literary fiction but i'm starting to get more and more into it and i think that this upcoming year is going to be the year where i read a ton of literary fiction and i am very very excited the first book i want to talk about is the measure by Nikki Ehrlich. If you want a thought-provoking story that really kind of tests your boundaries and morals, this is the book for you. Picture this. You wake up in the morning and there's a package sitting on your front door. Everyone in the country, everyone in the world gets the same package and on it, it tells you, it asks you if you want to know how long you have left to live. The story follows multiple characters who all are making different decisions for themselves and for the people around them and it turns into this whole conversation of should we know when we're gonna die? Will that affect our choices? Will that affect what job we get? Who we decide to date or be friends with? Where we want to live? And like there's so many factors that go into this. It was crazy how all of these different characters who are all in different areas and different parts of their lives were making different decisions all kind of interweaves and connects and like one choice affects another person's choice and it's like a domino effect. I really loved this book. It really really made me think and it honestly just kind of makes you wonder what would you do? And we have The Change by Kirsten Miller. This is one of the books that one year I talked about and said that this was a book that surprised me. This story follows three women who are each going through menopause and they find their bodies changing in very unexpected ways. Each woman is in a very different lifestyle and family situation but they all live in the same coastal town. This teenage girl's body washes up on shore and it leads to these three women coming together to figure out what happened and also digging up their town's hidden secrets. Next up we're going to talk about young adult fiction. Most of the young adult fiction I read personally is fantasy so they are really great standalone young adult fantasy books. I know it's really hard to find a fantasy that is strictly a standalone and actually still has all the world building and story that you would want. The first one is The Drowned Woods by Emily Lloyd Jones. This story follows our main character who in this kingdom magic has kind of gone away but she is the last of her kind. She is what's known as a water diviner. She can control water is essentially what she can do. She's actually on the run from the prince of this kingdom who has used her growing up to basically poison the wells of his enemies and while she's on the run she ends up joining this group of people who are all very different. One person's a thief, one person is a magical corgi, <laughs> the other person is her old mentor and then another guy who is actually cursed who decided to go on this quest, this heist to save the kingdom from this corrupt prince. I really enjoyed this story because it was just a really interesting world and it was very found family and all the characters I feel like were so interesting to read about and I just really really loved their story so highly recommend that one and the other book I'm going to talk about is Wishtress by Nadine
Nadine Brandes. In this world, our main character, she is what's known as a wishtress. There's one in existence and it's our main character. So what she can do is she can grant people's wishes through her tears. So if she cries, she can grant a wish and that's how her magic is used. When a wish goes wrong, she ends up getting cursed and her next tear will kill her. So she's kind of in hiding. She's trying to not be used by people. She's hiding the secret that she's the wishtress. There's this magical well that she needs to travel to in order to break the curse and save herself. She enlists the help of this guy named Bastion and he has his own hidden motives. He he agrees to take her to this well if she will grant him a wish. There's lots of moving parts in this story. I was entertained the entire time and I was very invested in this story and I really enjoyed our main character. And the last genre I'm going to be talking about is fantasy. So just regular new adult fantasy. I feel like I always talk about the same authors when it comes to fantasy. So I'm trying to branch out a little bit and pick some new ones. I do have one completed series that I'm going to talk about and one book that is the series is still ongoing. The first one I'm going to talk about is the completed series, which is the Lachlan Feud series. This is a four book series. Each of the books, I wouldn't say that they're too terribly long. It definitely reminded me of Akatar. So if you've read Akatar by Sarah J. Mass, this one definitely reminded me of that series, at least like the pacing of everything. This story follows our main character who is a princess in her kingdom. Now this world is kind of made up where kingdoms almost split in half. There's this like big mountain range that splits it and she's on one half and then there's a whole nother on the other half. But the other half kingdom, they're known as barbarians. Like their way of life is not even close to her way of life. Our main character, she ends up getting kidnapped, taken to this other kingdom and it's kind of like a hostage negotiation situation essentially. I really enjoyed this world just because the characters, I feel like each book you slowly learn about more and more characters and our main character, you see a lot of character development and growth in her from book one to book four. I don't know, it just honestly had everything I love in a fantasy book. It had all the tropes that I love. I love that it's a completed series. I feel like it's a very bingeable series for anybody who loves fantasy. And the final book I'm gonna talk about is The Hurricane Wars by Thea Guanzong. Now the second book, Monsoon Rising, I believe it's called, comes out very, very soon. So I'm really excited to get my hands on that book. I read this book a few months ago and I really, really loved it. It follows our main character who is a light bringer. So she can control light. It also follows our other main character who's a dark bringer. So he's like the reverse side of her. And in this world, they are at war and it's set in like Southeast Asia, I believe. The synopsis I feel like did not explain this book very well, but in a way where I was like pleasantly surprised with where this story went, it was so much more than I expected. And it ended in a way where I'm so ready for the second book. So I think this is a great gift idea because you will not have to wait very long for the next book to come out. It had that enemies to lovers and it had all the tropes that you would love in a fantasy world. This author and her writing style is just very, very easy to read and this world is not that complicated. It's very simple world building. And that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this gave you some really good gift ideas for books to buy any of your fellow book lovers in your life. I wanted to try to pick some books that aren't necessarily overly hyped because those are the ones most people have read. So we gotta branch out a little bit and I'm hoping that this video was different than my video last year. Last year's video was mainly just like objects and like stocking stuffers and things like that. But if you are interested in other book ideas or other gift ideas for this holiday season coming up, I highly recommend going and checking out that video. But I am so incredibly excited for this holiday season. I've been itching to start reading some winter reads and also I'm really excited to finally talk about and post my winter TBR. That's a video that I loved last year and I'm really excited to do it again this year. Keep an eye out for that one, my winter TBR. It's gonna be a good one, guys, okay? Stay tuned. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Happy reading, bye.